All right, so now that we've got this couch built out, let's um go and render it. So I'm just gonna hop up here and it looks like this geometry node is still named grid. I'm just gonna change that to couch. So it's something uh, more descriptive. And we're gonna actually hop out of, you know, this build layout that we've been using. We're gonna hop out of this and we're gonna jump into what is called the Solaris layout. So if we, if you just from this um, layout menu up here, select Solaris, you can see that it sort of changes the way our whole uh, situation looks right here. You may or may not be able to see your couch right now. My uh, network editor is still in the object context, but what we want to do is actually switch this over to the stage context right here. And then you can see everything disappears. So what's going on here? This stage is actually like a completely separate part of Houdini. In the stage context, what we're doing is we're building a USD scene. USD stands for Universal Scene Description, which is a format built by Pixar to help make it a, a very efficient way to generate scenes and work with 3D data across different render engines and different applications. So when we're working over here in the network editor, we're doing things to modify a USD scene graph, which is being generated over here in this uh, pane on the left hand side of the bottom right here. So you kind of see that what we can do is we actually, you know, can create our assets over in the, uh, you know, over here in regular Houdini build layout or whatever. And then, you know, you kind of create your assets, you create your geometry, you can do it here. And then you can bring it into this Solaris context where we're building a USD scene that will actually render. So to get our stuff, we can just throw down a SOP import and just import it into our USD scene. We'll say SOP Hit the tab key, type in SOP import, and just throw that down here. And then from the SOP path, we can uh, use the selector button and actually just go grab our couch with decorations uh, null that we created before and hit accept. And you can see now that we have added our couch into our scene. And you can see down here that um, if you open this little folder here, you can see that we've got a SOP import and we're importing a mesh. Now, it's not very descriptive. We might need to do something later with this if we want to actually add materials to it. But for right now, you can see that we're starting to build out our scene graph here. Let's um, pick a camera angle that we want to use for our rendering. So what I want to do is actually uh, just, I'm going to make this uh, view a little bit bigger down here. And maybe I'll just go down and kind of frame up my couch, just kind of looking at it uh, head on like so. And then I'm going to control click this camera button right here. You can see that that gives me a nice like this red border around the outside here. That indicates that if I move my view, it's actually going to bring the camera along with it. You can see as I move my view around here, um, it is actually updating these position and rotate parameters over here in the parameter view. So um, and you can also see that it has added a camera into this network for us. It's just kind of wired them in one after another. And if we look over here in our USD scene graph, we now have a camera section with a camera added to it. So I'm just going to go back and frame up my couch the way I had it before. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to untick the lock button right here. That means that now when I move my camera around, my camera that I had selected is going to be left where it was. And you can see it kind of floating in space here and pointing at the couch. I'm just going to hit the D key to make my background dark like I've done before. And uh, we can continue um, kind of messing around with this. Now to actually see what we're rendering, the way it would render if we were using Karma, which is SideFX's render engine that is built to work with USD, we actually have to go up here to this perspective uh, dropdown where it says perspective here. And we can see we've got a few options here. Importantly, we, we're using Houdini GL right now. That's just like a standard viewport renderer, open GL renderer. And then we've got Karma and Storm. Karma is the render engine that we want to be using. This is the render engine that SideFX has built to work with USD. It's brand new and it's great. So we're just going to click Karma. You can see that the scene kind of changes. And now what we have is this couch looks a little bit different. And you can see that if I um, hold down the Alt and right mouse click drag in on it, it's a little bit blocky. But that's because what it's doing is it's actually rendering this thing in the scene using a different render engine than the GL render engine we've been working with in the viewport this whole time. Now, it doesn't look like much now. We need to add lights and stuff like this, but we are in a viewport that is actually rendering um, the objects inside the viewport. And it's crazy because we have these handles. We can still manipulate things and see what the product of our final rendering is going to be live in the viewport like this. Now, to make this look a little bit nicer, I'm just going to switch this back to Houdini GL and we're going to add some extra stuff in here. I like to switch to Houdini GL just to make things a little bit more uh, like perform a little bit better when I'm just trying to kind of build in here. And then I'll switch back and forth between Houdini GL and Karma quite a bit as I'm kind of building out my scene to check where I'm at. So 
how we imported right here. We imported our couch from a different area of Houdini. We can actually create SOP network right here and just sort of kind of build right inside of this network as we are. So let's add a floor. I'm gonna throw down a grid. You see if I throw down a grid, I just hit tab type grid and put it in here. And let's just throw down an, a merge. I'm just gonna merge, um, let's just merge our SOP import and our grid right before the uh, camera. And you can see that it's added a grid down here in our, um, in our USC scene graph, and we've got a grid on the floor. And so the difference between th these two nodes, the SOP import is actually grabbing a SOP that was already created from elsewhere in Houdini. This SOP create actually has a network inside of it where we can work in SOPs the way we were working in this other part of Houdini. So if we double click and jump in here, you can see we've got a grid. And we're basically, if I hit spacebar F, we're basically working in SOPs now inside of the stage context like we'd like to or something like that. So what we can do is uh, maybe we can actually, you know, duplicate this grid and create a back wall while we're here. So I'm just going to throw on a transform node. And I'm going to just uh, transform the grid. I'm going to put my display flag on the transform and then template the grid. And over on the left hand side, my um, icons have been collapsed. I'm just going to click this bar to bring them back out. And I'm going to grab my manipulator button right here. And let's just rotate this. I'm gonna hold down the control key to get it to snap to 45 degree angles. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees and move it back along the negative Z axis to a value of let's say negative uh, five. So that's just kind of resting at the edge of that there. And then I'll merge these together like so. And we can see them all together. And maybe I'll actually bring this back wall up a little bit higher. Let's grab this transform. I'm just going to bring it up in Y by a value of, yeah, 3.5. Sounds good. Okay, cool. So now with my display flag on this merge right here, if I hop back out to the stage context, you can see that we have, uh, whoops, I'm going to hit spacebar F to frame up my scene. You can see we've got our couch and this sort of floor and back wall that we have in our room here. Now, on this node out here, we have an additional transform. You see that now I can actually grab it up here, pull it in a little bit closer to the couch. So the couch is sort of right up against the wall um, like so. So I'm just kind of bringing in a value of about four. Next, let's add a light. So I want to add a couple lights to the scene. One, I want to have sort of a directional light kind of coming in through a window. And the other light I want to use is just a dome light to kind of create some ambience around the scene. So let's start with the dome light. I'm going to throw it on a uh, dome, a dome light here. And let's just uh, drop that into our graph and wire it in below. And uh, turn on this display flag here. Um, now, it hasn't done much to our scene right now. But if I switch back um, from this right hand menu, I'm going to switch back into our camera one. So we're now looking through our camera again. And then from this second menu, I'm going to select Karma again. And now that just takes a second. You can see that it is updating our scene now. It's starting to look more realistic. We see we've got the uh, shadows being cast underneath here and everything's starting to look a lot better. Now we can adjust what our dome light looks like. Maybe we can increase the intensity to a value of maybe five. You can see it's, it's really bright. I didn't want to do that. Maybe a value of two, just to kind of brighten things up a little bit better. And we can also kind of maybe warm the light up. I kind of want this to feel like maybe a, like a sunset scene. So I might just change the temperature to, you know, sort of a warmer uh, yellowish tone and then kind of bring in the saturation a little bit. So that kind of just adds some of that ambient uh, warm light into our scene. So another thing that I would like to do is add a distant light coming in. So a distant light is just sort of going to mimic what kind of the sun is doing. And I just kind of want to want it coming in at an angle so that we can cast some nice shadows onto our couch here. So I'm going to throw down a distant light and wire that in right here. You can see that it kind of brightens up the scene a little bit more. Now I'm going to, um, let's just grab that distant light. I'm going to select the uh, manipulator. I'm going to actually grab it. I'm going to grab the position of it so I can kind of just kind of move it up to the, the upper left hand side right here so I can see it a little bit better. Um, and maybe at this point, I'm actually going to just switch back to Houdini GL real quick. Um, but I have my distant light right here and I'm going to just rotate it so that I can kind of see, you can kind of get a feel for what direction the light is casting into. So let's just bring it, um, I just like, it doesn't really matter where this is physically located in terms of its position in the scene. The only thing that really matters is its rotation, but I like to kind of bring it off to the side 
to uh, make things a little bit easier to see. So I'm just going to kind of bring it over here so I can have kind of a visual representation of where the light rays are coming into my scene. And so now if I switch back to Karma, and maybe I'll right now, I'm just going to turn off the dome light. I'm just going to select the dome light and bypass it, hit the bypass flag. And so you can see these nice long shadows coming from this, this distant light that we've created here. And if I go back and select it and maybe rotate it a little bit around the Y, you can see that it is, it's changing how that light, that how those shadows are casting uh, into our scene like so. So I think that um, I'm going to bring the intensity of this light up a bit. Let's try an intensity of 20. That's a little bit too high. Let's try an intensity of 10. Still too high. Let's do five. And that's looking pretty good. I'm going to just uh, warm this up a little bit. So I'm going to adjust the color to, you know, a nice orange tone and uh, bring up the saturation like so. My color right here is set to HSV. You could also click on this icon right here, this little color right here and do all your color adjustments this way. Um, I might actually uh, desaturate this a little bit like so. Maybe maybe actually increase the saturation and make it a little bit more on the yellow-ish uh, spectrum, something like that. Um, so now what I'd like to do is kind of mimic uh, the shadows coming in from a window. And we don't have uh, a window to mimic that right now, so we just need to create one. So we're going to do it with our SOP create that we had before. I'm just going to switch back to the uh, Houdini GL render. And we can go make a nice shadow caster for our scene. So from the GL viewport, one thing that I think would make things a little bit easier on us is if we could um, see our shadows with this GL viewport instead of having Karma running the whole time. And we can do that by just switching to this high quality lighting mode over here. High quality lighting with shadows on the right hand side of our viewport. If we click that, we get a... Uh, you know, a very rough representation of what our shadows look like, but it's a lot easier to work with in the uh, viewport, especially while I'm trying to record a video. So you can kind of see those shadows reacting as I'm adjusting this uh, distant light. So now let's cast some nice shadows from uh, like what would look like a piece of window geometry uh, coming off from the left hand side of our scene. So we're kind of going to make another window. We're going to use another SOP create. So I'm just going to throw it on a SOP create here. And we're going to just wire that into the merge as well. And let's jump in here. And here we've got a blank canvas here. And we can just um, use a grid to create our window shape. So I'm just going to um, hit tab and type grid to uh, throw down a grid. And what we could do is actually use the uh, grid lines of our grid and uh, create sort of like little little square shaped holes that you know the light can kind of peek through. So I'm going to throw down a poly extrude. And if I wire that in here and we look at it and we start to uh, inset a little bit, you can see that it's just insetting this giant square around the outside of it. But if I say divide into, it's saying connected components here, from this drop down, if I select individual elements, you can see now when we adjust our inset, we're actually insetting each square of this grid. And so in order to get holes in it, we can actually just adjust which parts of our Poly extrude we're exporting. So right here, you can see we're outputting the side and the front. But if we untick the front, we just get a bunch of nice holes here like this. I'm just going to hit the D key and make my background dark, make it easier to see. So I want to kind of build out a wall around this. And the way I can do that is similar to what we just did. I'm just going to grab my grid and I'm going to throw it on another poly extrude. And here, I'm just gonna extrude this one. I'm gonna inset it outwards quite a way. So I'm just gonna like inset it in the negative, you know, maybe negative 10 direction. So I get this giant rectangle out here. And it looks kind of funky, but all we wanna do is output the side. So instead of outputting the front, we're just outputting the side of our outset extrusion like this. And then I can merge them together. Like this. And it looks like our, our actual, our poly extrude is actually upside down. Um, that's why this is kind of showing up light gray here and purple here. So just to make things um, all conformed, I'm gonna uh, throw down a reverse node um, on the left-hand side of my um, network here after the big one, just so that they're all, all the polygons are facing in the same direction. So here we've got like a nice kind of shape that we can use to block our light. And so now if we hop back over here to the stage context, 
And I'm going to just uh, pull out here real quick. You can see that our window is on the ground. We just need to position it. So with this stop create selected, I can um, kind of rotate it. Then I can just bring it over to this wall like so. So now if I hop back into my camera, you can see that we're getting these uh, shadows coming from the wall like so. And I can uh, go down here and now grab my distant light and rotate it until I get some nice long shadows casting into my scene in a way that I think looks kind of cool. Um, I might want to modify the, the positioning of this window a little bit. So I'm going to just uh, jump out of my camera here and use this manipulator. Maybe what I'll do is I'll scale it down a little bit and I'm just shifting between my scale, uh, rotate and translate uh, modes, hitting E, R and T respectively. So hitting T, I'm in translate mode. It's going to bring this out a little bit and bring it up. I'm just kind of keeping an eye of what these shadows are kind of doing on my scene here. So I'm just going to bring it out this way and maybe I'll bring it out from the wall a little bit more to kind of cover, kind of frame up that shadow on that couch a little bit better like that. Maybe I'll actually bring it a little bit more. And I kind of feel like these window panes might be a little bit too thick and there might be too many of them. So I can always um, hop back here into my SOP create or I can see it right here. It's going to say hide other objects and I can always just adjust, you know, the thickness of this. I can just reduce the amount of insetting that is occurring here. I can also change the grid size at this point. I could maybe say I want it to be, you know, a five by a five by seven or something like that. Um, so it gives us a slightly different shape of window. And if we hop back out here to our stage context, we get a totally different modified pattern that's casting across of our couch. So if I go in now, let's say look through our camera again and switch it over to Karma again, we can kind of see we're getting the effect of, you know, shadows being cast through a window onto our geometry, which is kind of cool. Um, now it's not fully getting the whole couch here. So let's see, I'm going to switch back to Houdini GL and see if I can grab this uh, SOP create here and just translate it back in, uh, in Z a little bit more. So if I bring it back, to a value of about 3.4. It looks like it's getting all the way over to this side of the couch. So that's good. And um, let's just switch back to Karma. And yeah, you can see that, that uh, it does feel kind of like sun casting uh, rays through a window onto our couch. I'm just gonna uh, pause the rendering again. I'm gonna um, switch this back over to Houdini GL.